You should be locked in a union building. Power. A supreme hero. I didn't say superhero. That implies beyond human. You should be supreme. And all that you do as an African man for your children. When they think about an invincible man, they should think about you. When they think about the Iron Man, they should think about you. When they think about the amazing Spider-Man, they should see you. I'm talking in the real sense of the word. They should see you. You should be there. On the flyer. The seven cardinal verses of my eye are bound up in a myotic man. They are bound up in a myotic man. Those cardinal verses. These direct and govern his behavioral interaction with himself, family, community, and enemy. Each principle is internalized, therefore they collectively serve as his constitution of self. They are the, they are the unseen laws regulating his, his actions, which are expressed through 13 behavioral attributes. Direct and govern. Heavy interaction, self, family, community, and enemy. This is where we are failing at, right here, tremendously. We're failing right here, tremendously. We're failing right here, tremendously, and right here. A lot of African men are destroying themselves. We're drunk. We're high. We're preaching. We're reckless. We don't exercise. We don't eat correctly. We're doing all those things that is not going to allow us to be of any great benefit. We really got to lock hands with the enemy because the time is coming. We got to lock hands with the enemy in physical confrontation. We're not going to be fit mentally, psychologically, physically, or spiritually. We're not going to be fit. Therefore, we will be demolished. And if we are demolished because we are on the front line, African. Man, we're on the, the far per, the peripheral of our community. If they defeat us, they're going to overrun the community. And they're going to destroy, they're going to rape our women, enslave our children, and murder the elders if they destroy us. That's what's going to happen. Never forget that. Study warfare. Present yourself to the world decently. What does that say? You can't, you can't come outside look in any kind of way. Your pants hanging down. Your clothes not clean. No, you have to be decent, brother. You have to be decent. That's a part of your character. Self-presentation is a part of your character. Not doing anything to undermine your man. Faithfulness. In relationships. What I have observed is a lot of men undermine themselves as men in a relationship because they don't know how to deal with the woman. And oftentimes they're with a woman they shouldn't be with anyway because she don't even recognize who they are. Therefore, she makes it a, a part of her daily routine to attack who you are. And since you don't know who you are, you fail and you begin to undermine your own manhood by behaving in ways uncoming of a man. I see it too much. It's happening daily. Our boys see it. And then our boys begin to emulate that behavior that they see you demonstrate. Because believe it or not, our boys look to men to get an idea as to what they should or should not be doing. If they see you behaving in a situation that's unbecoming as a man, and they begin to adopt that, that's why the caliber of men is being eroded for each passing generation. It's being eroded because the men don't know what it is to be a man, because we have what been displaced from our culture. But the best place to get an understanding of what African manhood is, is African culture, authentic African culture. I'm not talking about anything that York or Asia or Arabians or Islamic people have put their hands in. I'm not talking about, not talking about that stuff that's in Ethiopia, there's a bunch of Indians that came out of India, 
not the Dravidians, or not those ancient Kushites that was in India. I'm talking about those Aryans, watered down ones, who came over there and that ain't Ethiopia. Those ones. That's not Africa. That's a foreign invasion. We gotta be clear on that. I'm not talking about the ones that's in Egypt. Some of them, them Islamic ones that came out of Saudi Arabia and all those other places. That's not us. Because they are not the ancient Kushites. And we're not going to argue that. They are something else. That's the reason why they invaded and done the things they did in our land. And that's the reason why they're still doing it to this day. Enslaving Africans over there in the Sudan. Because they're not Africans. Never forget that. So we're not talking about that. We're talking about African culture and African manhood. You got to go find you a Shaka Zulu or an animal. You got to go find you a Thomas Sankova or a Mil Kar You got to go find a Patrice Lamont. You got to go find a real African man. Uncompromising when it comes to the safety and well-being of your family, community, and African family. You cannot compromise on those three. You gotta go to your death on those three. If need be. You don't compromise on that. You don't wave on it. You don't say, okay, you can take my son to leave my door. You don't say that. You gotta go to your death. You don't say, okay, you can just, you can come in and do each one of my community, but just spare my family. You don't say that. You don't say it's okay, but just allow me to get a little bit of power, but you can enslave the rest of them. You don't do that. You don't compromise when it comes to them. And if you do, and if it's ever known that you have done it, you have to be, and you must be, and you will be penalized. Straight up, free from hypocrisy, Sincere in speech and behavior, lacking deceit. Because a lot of us like to deceive one another. Like we're very, very deceptive. And as men, there's no room for us to be deceptive. Because at the core of African manhood is that African warriorship. You have no reason to be deceptive when it comes to dealing with another African man or African woman or an African child. If it's an African child, you're going to deal with him the way you're supposed to deal with him. He's going to get in line. You're not going to negotiate with him. You're not going to try to deceive him. You're going to tell him, go sit down. He's going to go sit down. You're going to tell him, come to the meeting. He's going to come to the meeting. You're going to tell him, you must remain quiet in this meeting while men talk. He's going to remain quiet. You want to communicate to your woman. That's what that's about. Resolve. This is, this, is, this is very important. Resolve is very important. The ability to come to a definite or earnest decision about something. A critical thinker. All too often, I encounter a lot of brothers that find it difficult to just make a definite decision. It's a constant fluctuation. It's a constant questioning. It's a constant doubt factor that's in place. But as African men, we cannot have that. We have to possess resolve. We have to have resolve. What makes us have resolve is the ability to think critically, to think things through, to weigh out different options and then make a decision regardless of the outcome. You might make a decision that may not go in favor of how you think things should go. So what? Make the decision. As an African man, you must have it. You must demonstrate it. It must be you. Every time you fall, you must get back. Every time the bill man sitting that stuff in your door that's so demobilizing, you must look at it and tear it up and keep <laughs> Every time. You don't go in the house and lay that stuff on your wife and your children and she hear it all hung all down saying, well, well baby, how are we going to pay the bill? You know I lost my dog last month. Oh, we don't got time for that. We ain't crack and jump. What I say back here? Have some resolve, backbone, make a decision. Tear that thing up. Tell that bill that he can go do what you know he can go do. And do for your family. Persistent in your pursuit. I said early on. Know what you're out here for. Know what you must do. You should be free doing for yourself. That's your pursuit. So if you are working somewhere, you work 
with the mindset of getting free. That's your pursuit. That's part of your pursuit. Your ultimate pursuit is sovereignty. Things for your people. And they associate righteous with religious. I didn't say religious, I said righteous. Continued display of right action, just and fair in your dealings with others. A continued display of white right action. How do we know what's right in terms of our action? We know it by understanding our history and our culture. If our actions are in alignment with my eyes, then we know that they are right. If you give me good and I give back good, I'm doing what's right. If I strive to maintain harmony and balance amongst us, I'm doing what's right. If I'm telling the truth always in relation to us, I'm doing what's right. If I'm ensuring that justice is administered, I'm doing what's right. Justice is defending my community. Justice is protecting my community. Justice is about making sure that those who do us harm are dealt with. That's justice. It's a double-edged sword. It's a reward and a punishment. Organized, arranged, or composed in a neat, tidy manner. Structure. Structure. Organized, arranged. Now, the Maotic man, everything about the Maotic man, the African man, should be organized. His person should be organized. His family should be organized. His home should be organized. Organizations should be organized. Community should be organized. Now, if his community is not organized, that's because he is not organized on a number of levels. He may personally be organized within person, but he hasn't yet organized within community. And that's why community is not organized. The Maatic man understands the necessity of organization and strive to manifest organization on every level of human interaction and engagement. The organization ensures success in practice. Governed by a system or method of operation. We're supposed to know how we're going to operate within our community because we have organized it. We know when we're going to clean it up. We know when we're going to do our block walks. We know when we're going to be in the house, outside the house. We know when we're going to eat outside. We know when our children are coming in because we have organized it that way. We organize it like that so we can ensure our survival and our success. Adhering to a moral code. You gotta have a code. Don't be disrespectful to your neighbor. Don't use profanity. Don't yell at the children. I'm gonna make it loud sometimes, but don't make it a habit of yelling at our children. Don't sit around our young ladies and talk bad about African men. Don't sit around our young boys and talk bad about African women. The modern man teaches the African boy how to be a man. Based in African country. African concepts and African precepts. Behavior is governed by African values. What are African values? They're not materialistic. It's not about diamonds and gold. So what are African values? African values of knowledge, the value of family, the value of children. Keep that in mind. So you know you should be getting into portion of that. I ain't gotta tell you. I don't gotta look with, with the African. There's no debate about pro-life or pro-choice. I don't have that debate because it's, it's a child centered society. Let me tell you what said again. It's a child centered society. So the African don't have that debate. That's not an African debate. That whole paradigm is your thing. But we think it becomes an intellectual debate because we start arguing that women have choices and, and they got a right to choose. We start saying stuff like that. I don't understand what you're trying to say. I understand what you're trying to say, but it only makes sense 
when you take that woman, the African woman, out of an African context. That's the only way that makes sense. If you put African womanhood back in African context, it does not make any sense. Because in African context, African women want to bring children into this world. Because her motherhood is contingent upon birthing children. Not laying down as an outraged woman, discard children. The Maotic man is an excellent man. The process of continued progression and behavioral evolution. So it goes back to a question Sister Hamid asked early on. According to the Maotic man, one should be excellent in the sense that he is demonstrating continual progression and behaviorally is evolving to a better person. This is continued, constant. Perpetual high quality performance. Constantly demonstrating growth and development. This is the Maati man. This is African manhood at its finest. Not becoming complacent with not producing. Not being okay with not moving forward. Not patting your back, stuff on the back and you're giving 50% when 100% is demanded? Not making an excuse for, for always showing up late, but saying, I still rock.